Well, good afternoon. So what we should do is, uh, let's give a round of applause here for the hotel staff for the good servings that we had lunch. Merci, thank you. We're going to continue on with the, uh, our program here, and I'm going to ask uh, David Moran, who's the uh, GDI staff, to come up, and he has something for you guys this afternoon, and all, all of you this afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> We're pleased to announce the launch of uh, one of our newest children's story, uh, the story of the rabbit dance. Uh, the author, uh, Jean Peltier, is one of the delegates here at the conference, and it's her story. And Rita Flamond, another of our delegates, did the translations in Michif. Uh, so in a minute here, they're both going to come up and share their story with you. It was an amazing experience to work with both Jean and Rita on this project. And I look forward to working with them again in the future. And now if Jean and Rita can come on up. The story of the rabbit dance. One day, a very long time ago, in a small Metis settlement, there lived a Michif trapper by the name of Jacques. And where would the Nashbitskayas, the Mtid village, and Michif Sasurki we hear Jacques is in the It was almost time for the Metis gathering, and his wife Therese and their 12 children were all busy doing daily chores. Jacques was just finishing his cup of tea. He was going to get all his traps and snares before the snow was too deep. The river and lakes were almost frozen. Jacques was a bowl of tea. He was a bowl of Today was a very special day. They were getting ready to go to the gathering held every year. Friends, neighbors, relatives gathered from near and far. They would exchange gifts, stories, songs, music, and dance. Everyone would bring food for this special occasion. This evening, Therese can go ahead with children to the gathering with, with the children, Jacques thought to himself. Lisa, me, you as in, Piwako Maranak, Mijuepo to Tewag, Ara, Wahio, Kima, Ma Meshkatona, Ma Dogli, Prezan, Linestuer, Li Chanson, Li Music, Li Dance, Kakiwa, Li Manji, Peta, Utaka, Kakchita, Kamega. Jacques put his cup of tea down, picked up his parflesh bag, and 22. He said farewell to his family and was on his way, thinking, I'll get to the gathering as soon as I can. Jacques at the port, pocket numb so ball the tea. When Teresa and the children arrived, everyone at the gathering was having a wonderful time. There was a lot of good food to eat. Old time quadrilles were being played and danced. Jacques was very happy as he reached his last trap. By golly, now I can go dancing, he mumbled to himself as he started to return home. Jacques <laughs> 
Gandoni min a dita show at the kiwet. It would be dark when he reached home, but he would have enough time to go to the gathering because it would last three days. As Jacques started for home, he remembered that he would have to share another fancy jig step. As he hummed the Red River jig to himself, he began to dance. Right, left, right. One, two, three. He counted as he did this step four times, each time facing a different direction. He called his new step the four directions. When he reached home, he cleaned up and started out for the gathering. The debit, the debit, the pishkayo, I did the kushkiwi yuak maga, Mr. Hilitankayo, Jetik, the kushik, kamama wito chick, a coast trajur, the tatajita kamigan. Edigiwe, Jack, I did not get away, Tamtanji, Tisha, Mushim would let jig. we give up, keep a key show, ego at the ship where tell Gamma we to check. As Jacques came near the big house where everybody, everyone gathered, he could hear the wonderful sound of the fiddle playing drops of brandy. Jacques could see the shadows of the people in the house dancing La Danse de Crochet. He heard the dogs barking and the whistles of the rabbits. Ah, he thought. The dogs must be chasing the rabbits. Jacques, at the question, Jacques, Jacques, a rat is a question, Dali Grumezo, Kakio, a weir, Kamama weeded, Petawelli Vielo, drops of brandy, a get a chigate, Jacques Wapamelli Mirage de Mon, and he need la dance de crochet, Petawel, Lichien, and Emmy Kiet, Lilieve, Quesh Kushiet. As he reached the clearing, he stopped very quickly. He moved toward the trees. There he stood and watched in surprise. He saw dogs of all sizes standing in a straight line. On the other side was a row of rabbits of all colors. Some of the dogs and rabbits were watching the people in the house dancing La Danse de Crochet. The rabbits at the window would tell the rabbits beside them what was happening at the dance, so they would relay it to the others at the bottom of the hill. Well, the dogs were kind of lazy, so they just told each other, just do what the rabbits do. Do what the rabbits do. <laughs> Canoapa meog, lemon de dans la maison, la danse de crochet, et ni mid. Lilièv dans les sassi, a tuita maweog, Lilièv a coti, et ni paui tange, et ta camigac dans la danse. Cacio a tuita matoac, zisque squatch dans la bot, a ben lichien, navachego timeog, ititoag. Muchiganoa, cascanoa, a migliliev, muchiganoa, a migliliev. The dog would swing the rabbits and would side slide step chasing the rabbits in a figure eight formation until the dog tagged the rabbit and all the dogs had a turn. Le chien est de mal le lièvre, 
Ego ka kiu li xie me me shku jie du ta hik. Then the rabbits would take their turn. As they came down, down the line, they would turn, turn the dog around and slide step away doing, doing a figure eight formation until the rabbit tagged the dog. They would all have a turn, and when the music stopped, they too would stop. Jacques was never so happy as he was now. He would go and tell the story of what he had seen. Some people might not believe him, but he would show them how to do this new dance, the rabbit dance, and that was the beginning of the rabbit dance. Jame Jacques speaks me atem, Tando Aji Moke Guaikawa Patak. In no Kakuli Monta de Bretago, Marga Marga Coaptail, Tansi Jenimi, it Omarly new dance, La Dance de Liev. Eco, Eco Spi, or Chick out Chimaja by La Dance de Liev. Do you know the moral of the story? No matter who you are or where you are, we are equal. What two things did Jacques teach you? And that's the end. The end. <laughs> I would like to thank GDI for all the, the help they have given me, the support. I would like to thank Darren, David, Karen, and I also would like to thank uh, one of my son-in-laws. Uh, he lives in the East Coast. He was the one that got me started with, the ra with doing this by uh, typing the first, the first uh, draft out. So, and especially to my mother who had passed away a year ago. Uh, she was the drive of me doing this because I used to tell her all kind of little short stories regardless if I just made them up and told her big lies she had a thrill just laughing and and me hearing her laugh that that was uh, a great thing for me so she told me you're such a good liar why don't you write all this thing these things down <laughs> so I, so then I started, I figured, well, Mom, I'm not going to write all big lies, but I'm going to write what you guys used to talk, talk about when I was small. So that's, uh, that's where I got the idea and kept on going. And I would like to thank Rita Flamon for translating it for me and making me uh, learn how to speak, which I did. And uh, by the time I finished learning how to read the story, I, for, I almost forgot how to speak English because I was having a hard time reading the English part when we were doing the CD. And uh, I also would like to thank Lillian LaFontaine. She's someplace, she must be someplace back there. Uh, I used to phone her at night and ask her, uh, do you want me to, uh, do you want to hear a story? And then she'd say, okay, okay. So I'd read her a story, and then after I read it, and I told her, how do you, how do you think it is? Oh, she said, it's sounding good. Well, good night. I tell her not hang up on her. <laughs> and everybody else who I forgot to mention, thanks a lot for helping me do this book. Thank you. I would like to say a few words also. I would like to thank Gabriel Dumont Institute for all their support they've been giving me with my, my work and my translation. And uh, it, was, it was fun working with uh, Jean. We, we, uh, we spoke over the phone for hours and hours uh, 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 listening to her read this Michif story. And it was a lot of fun doing it. And I, and I want to, thank, I want to thank, the, thank the Gabriel Dumont Institute for their support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
much, uh, Jean and Rita. And I want to acknowledge the uh, beautiful artwork of Métis artist Joanne Panis, uh, who brings the animals to life. You um, uh, may have recognized her work from a previous publication, The Beaver's Big House, where she depicts animals very well. It certainly fills uh, us with pride to see our elders having their work produced in uh, Machif um, so that our children and the future generations can have our language and our culture. I want to thank David uh, Morin also for all the work he did on this project because uh, everything that GDI do does has a project leader and David was the lead on this project. Um, so. Uh, um, I'm just a little, I, I love that story too. I think what it, uh, it does is it shows um, we have a good sense of humor uh, because when you think about uh, some of the images in there, you can't help but laugh. Um, I was a teacher before I got into this uh, curriculum development process and I know that when you use material that uh, students find interesting, they learn to read and write very quickly. In the teacher talk, we call this uh, uh, culturally relevant um, uh, and culturally affirming content and perspectives. And this is what is needed in our schools to increase the literacy of Métis people. I think it also shows the non-Métis students that um, we have a history, a culture, a language, we're proud of it, and uh, we can um, share it with others with our humor and our art. Thank you again, Reed and Jean. All right, we're going to proceed with the uh, updates, and at this uh, uh, point, I'd like to call on uh, Rene Terran from the Métis Nation of uh, British Columbia to proceed with his report. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of MNBC, I would like to express my appre appreciation for this opportunity to participate in this seventh National Mitchell Language Conference. May I also extend my compliment to everyone at Gabriel Dumont Institute who so oddly organized this important event. We are, we are here for several reasons. Our work has concerned the survival of our beloved Mitchell language. But I'd like to note also that first and foremost, we are Métis people love to celebrate our Métis culture. It is an expression of our wonderful music, our dancing, and our traditional activity that are embodied in the Michif language. Taken together, they are our very identity as a people. This is why we are here, and it is why I wish to touch on my remarks. I believe that cultural to our Métis value is our proud, self-governing, and sustainable nation. And our nation is an embodies in the Michif language. Michif is a vehicle by which presents and future generations are able through the elders to learn about our precious culture. Each generation of speakers, therefore, is responsible for passing on the next the unique and irreplaceable culture. Social value and spiritual belief that the Michif language embodies. And so the future of Michif and with is the continuing identity of Métis Nation rests in large part with efforts such as this conference. Michif is endangered language and without clear dedication, support it could disappear altogether. Revival is crucial for its central to, to the unique recognition of the Métis Nation by all Canadians and by their government institution. For this reason, MNBC goals for revitalizing the Michif language contemplate a process driven our Métis belief and values. Accordingly, the approach that we have begun to reflect our chartered communities, their perspective and their requirement. We want to capture the essence of Michif and its value as an essential cultural element of the Métis identity. Of course, the picture I have painted here is not solely that of MNBC. It is a vision expressed by our elders, one shared 
by the Métis Communities Group individual throughout British Columbia who entrust the MNBCs to speak for them. Here is what we have accomplished so far towards midshift revitalization. Last year, and again this year, we are conducting a week-long midshift works language workshop in the form of a wilderness camp. This features the direct involvement of elders. Approximately 25 people attended each camp. The intent is to provide a cultural setting with related activities that would encourage the learning of the Michif language. At our AGM, we also conducted a provincial conference on the Michif language. Many people attended. The objective was to increase the number of Michif speakers in BC to enhance the quality of Michif language. As well, six delegates from MNBC are in attending the National Michif Conference here in Saskatoon. I am very pleased with these beginning, but clearly more incentive effort is necessary to ensure that they will develop into a broader range of training activities that are so crucial to the restoring of our language. In order to apply limited resource to the greatest effort, MNBC proposed to concentrate on activities over the next two years, corresponding to the current funding under ALI. The result of this three years term will guide the activities for the subsequent seven years ending in 2017. MNBC identified three objectives for the current funding terms. First, to support community-based language activities and project aim at protecting and revitalizing the Michif language and the Métis culture in British Columbia. Second, to promote the Michif language culture identity throughout British Columbia. Third, to, continue, to contribute to the development of a framework for a national Michif language and cultural strategy across Métis homeland. Among the priorities activities at the outset for research these goals, we will be inviting and advice and guidance of elders, others at the community and provincial level throughout community discussion, workshop, and presentation. Encouraging and supporting in homes, community-focused acti activities such as mischief workshop, camp research, and development of innovative tools to teach the mischief language such as mischief learning video. Preparing and distributing the community's appropriate resource, informing and material on effective method and approach. Working with the supporting with the National Mischief Working Group. Throughout, we want to, to be preserving treasured material to the, promote broader knowledge and appreciation of the Michif language as an integral part of Canada national heritage. During preliminary consultation with our communities, we were told again and again of the deep concern that elders have regarding the faith of the Michif language as cultural strategy across the Métis homeland. We firmly believe that Aboriginal language such as Michif are one of the essential qualities that define of all of Canada as a unique that ultimately hang over our balance. It is the oral history that describe how Aboriginal people came to be on this land now called Canada. It is also the song and the dance that express our relationship with the land. When rendered in Aboriginal language such as mischief, the story gives our social fabric a texture, color, and spirit that are both beautiful and truly unique. Initiatively, such as the conference, play a key part in revitalizing and confirming that vital quality of our national character. I would like to um, ask uh, the Director for Culture, Colleen Hudson, perhaps to give us a little overview on where uh, MNBC is actually taking its five years plan. Tanche Kiwa. Uh, it's the only words I know. The rest are swear words my cousins taught me, so you'll have to bear with me. I'm, I'm here to learn, so hopefully before I leave, I've already learned several words, and hopefully many more will follow. Thank you to Karen and thank you to David for, uh, for the shuttle ride to GDI yesterday and purchasing about $9 million worth of books. That was great. And for all the work that goes into something like this, I really appreciate it, and thank you very much to everyone that's here. Uh, Métis Nation, British Columbia 
is where I was born. Uh, my family's from Winnipeg, off uh, out of uh, just south of Winnipeg, off the uh, south end of Lake Winnipeg, actually, in Hodson, Manitoba. And I probably got some relatives here, I'm sure. Um, we've put forward the 2008-2009 language and culture initiatives for this year, and as Renee was speaking to, there's several. And we realize that Michif has been recognized as one of the critically endangered languages. So having that to move forward on is, is very important for all of us. One of the initiatives is to at least have exposed people to Métis culture and language in BC, a thousand people. Not necessarily all Métis people, all people need to be exposed to Métis culture and history so they can understand who we are. And we have more challenges in BC, of course, with that because there's fewer Métis people there. So, and one of the other initiatives that we're actually doing is um, we have 37 chartered Métis communities in BC and we're having cultural camps in 15 of them in the new year and festivals in, throughout the rest of the province. It's actually BC's 150th anniversary this year. So we're using that opportunity with the Ministry of Aboriginal Relations and Reconciliation to move ahead with Michif and celebrate it throughout the province for BC 150. So they've actually funded us for several projects that will be very important in taking the language and the culture forward. One of the, uh, one of the initiatives we're doing is we're doing a reenactment of the Sinclair expedition that came across the Rocky Mountains. So we're actually riding from Rocky Mountain House into across Alberta and into uh, BC with riders that the whole thing will be videotaped. And so that'll be one of the projects and no, I won't be riding one of those horses. But uh, it, it proves to be very interesting in the years to come. As Renee said, we're doing another cultural camp coming up here in a couple of weeks. And that'll be a uh, Mitch of immersion in the, in the wilderness. And from there, we'll go on to hopefully exposing more people to the Michif language. I've talked to several people here that have got great curriculum ideas and development that, that uh, we'd like to share with and hopefully have this in BC down the road. Um, one of the other initiatives we have is a book written by the Goulets. They've written several books about Métis people. The book they're just finishing now for us is uh, the, uh, From Métis Outpost to Colonial Status. So from that, we're creating a documentary that will be actually international on Métis people in BC. So there'll be the short clips like you see on the Knowledge Network or at APTN where they show the history. So we'll have our language and culture on there. So as long as we can take it, we're taking it to multimedia and to text and to author, and, and we'll be working with GDI in the future on this and, and working towards celebrating the anniversary here. So thank you for that, and uh, I might be... Uh, wanting to talk to a few of you while I'm here and getting some ideas from you. So thanks for listening. Thanks very much. I appreciate uh, all the information and uh, gives us ideas of how to proceed in our own region. Uh, Fran Heinemann will give the uh, report for the Métis Nation of Alberta. I'm going to plant a seed as she's proceeding uh, uh, to the podium and ask uh, those of you that would like to acknowledge the efforts made by individuals in your community to consider those as re part of the reporting that we're doing here today too. We have heard wind in the uh, uh, conversational times at the conference of uh, specific individuals um, and how they're supporting Machif in the community and we invite you to come up and acknowledge those so the, the group can uh, share in their accomplishment. Grant. I've got my remarks here, they're not as big as uh Renee's probably won't come across as well either, but give it my best shot. Uh, my name's Fran Hindman. I'm, as you just heard, I'm from the Métis Nation of Alberta. Well, let me start with saying Tansi. How's my pronunciation? I promised last year I would learn the language, and I have not uh, uh, done as much homework as I should have, so I, I've got to keep working on it. Uh, on behalf of the Métis Nation of Alberta delegation, I'd like to uh, say thank you for, for extending an invitation to all of us to attend. Uh, we recently uh, survived a big conference and we know all the work that's involved in planning it. So thank you very much for all that you're, you're doing and all that you've done. I'd just like to quickly go over the names of the delegates that are here from Alberta. We have uh, Sylvia Johnson, who is the president of Region 6. Louis Belrose, the vice president of Region 6. Homer Putra. Vice President of Region 2, and I'll stop right there at this moment and just tell you how grateful we are to have leadership with us. 
it's uh, a lot of our initiatives, you know, we target different age groups. And so we target children and we target youth. We target women, pregnant women, nursing women, HIV people, prison and prisoners. And uh, lots of times it's really important to target or to encourage your leadership to participate because when you have leadership buy-in, everything just seems to work better. So we're really happy that Sylvia Lewis and Homer can be here with us. We also have uh, Elder Marge Fidel, and I always call her our hot elder. And I, I call her that not just because she's a beautiful woman, she's hot, but she's busy. She's all over Alberta. She's a zone four elder in that Sedmonton and area, but she's just a real mover and shaker in the community. And she makes sure things get, get done and she does them well and with passion. We also have Ef Ephraim Bouvier here, who's, uh, who was, uh, I mean, he's still, he's a natural leader, and he's here from Calgary. He was the vice president of Region 3, and he's here as well. Um, Roy Dume, Emil Blyan, Esther Oje, Cecile House, myself. Athena is here, and she's Athena Lothian, and she's our Machif program coordinator. She's with us for two months now, and we're delighted and thrilled to have her. Athena, just being with us for a few months, has gotten, uh, you know how many times we've said, hey, let's put Machif names on things like podium and, and microphone and chair and wall and door. And Athena's been with us two months and she's doing that. And uh, I just think it's fantastic. She's got Machif playing and uh, on different computers. Uh, I think it's a ploy to get them on different people's computers. She says, mine's not working, can I play it on yours? But you know what that does? It exposes another little group of people in our office to the Machif language. And these things, you know, are really easy to do, but, it, but they're not. You say you're going to do them, and then you find it's another year gone by where you haven't really done those things. So Athena's taking the initiative to do those, and we're really grateful for that. We also have Diane Ludwig and Elsie Anderson here. And uh, Diane attended our conference that I spoke about in February, and she said, Fran, can you, can you help me get to the Machif conference? Well, that's fantastic when people say they want to come to a conference, not just to have a trip, but she wanted to participate. And, and I've known Diane for years, and she's been at these conferences. She's participated, and she's also a passionate uh, um, keeper of the language. So, and also Melva Cardinal. Melva Cardinal's here with us as well. So this year, we're proud to say we have 14 delegates. And if any of you know how this works, we all chip in a bit of money and we pay for delegates. And, and so we, we said, you know what, if more want to come, we'll find a way to get them here. So we're, we're really pleased with that. Um, I'm going to talk about what we're doing right now, but I'd like to just quickly, last year we gave you a snapshot of what we've done the last seven years. And uh, some of those projects are, uh, because I had a really great uh, conversation with uh, Phil Gladue and it just it reminded me about uh, our Medicine Wheel Early Learning Center in Calgary. They teach Machif to little children there. And so we've got two of those locations in Calgary, both in Calgary because we've got some strong folks working there as well. Um, Sylvia and Lewis have a really great Machif Resource Center in their office. Uh, so they, they uh, get, get a hold of those resources however they can and they expose them to their community, which is very large in uh, northern Alberta. So those are just two of the projects that we've done in the past. I won't go over last year's presentation because I didn't bring it with me, and that's not what I'm here to talk about. Uh, oh, actually, just in my little notes here, Cecile House and Roy Dume have taught lessons in their communities, Bonneville and Lac La Biche. And these kinds of things, you know, a lot of the work that we do isn't necessarily funded through alley funding. We just, it's people that are passionate about keeping the language and preserving it. So uh, those are, that's another example of projects that are ongoing. Our three-year project, uh, we got our funding late in, uh, what, are, what fiscal are we in? We're still in this fiscal. We got our funding around December, I think. So we had nine months of our 12 fiscal, 12, nine months of our 12 months in our fiscal year already gone. We were just waiting, 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 waiting for funding from Heritage. And when it came in, we, we got the ball rolling because it's often difficult to work when the funding's not in. And that's what we've done for years. So we, we thought, okay, we're now doing a three-year project in two years and three months. But here's what it is in a nutshell. We're going to, we've got a committee and most of our, I think all of our committee members are here. And Athena's gonna go and meet the elders, the committee members, and talk with them and say, who do you know speaks Machif in your community? And this project is called Machif in Alberta. So they're gonna go and meet these people in their homes or coffee shops or wherever they are and have a, a list of questions that they ask them that are recorded. And 
we again want to thank GDI for all the great work they've done in this area because we've been doing some work on, uh, on the questions. We've met with people from the University of Alberta. And then we, Athena found this great set of questions that we, we think we could use with permission from GDI. Go out to the communities and capture this information. And here's the kind of the key to our project. With complete and utmost respect to all of everybody in this room and wherever you're from, what we'd like to do is capture Machif in Alberta speakers. So we want to know what Alberta Machif is. We know what Manitoba Machif is, and excuse me if that's the wrong way to put it, but we want to know what, what our community speaks. And we already know that in northern and southern Alberta there are, there are differences. I was really thrilled to hear Norman say that, you know what, standardizing is great, but we kind of got to get off that and start saying, okay, let's accept that everybody has a little bit of a uniqueness to the way they speak Machif in their community. Let's accept that and move on and just keep doing great work. So we're going to come up with these questions, we're going to record them, and then I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and tell you that, that those recordings are going to become a book that we're going to launch in the third year at a gathering in Alberta. Similar to our book that we created through an Aboriginal Healing Foundation project, and that was our Métis Memories of Residential Schools. So we want to have the exact language, the transcripts of those, those interviews turned into a book. Uh, so that's the, our main function is to come up with a, a list of speak, Alberta Michif speakers and then turn that into a book that's launched in year three at a gathering slash conference. In the second year, which is coming uh, in a couple of weeks, we want to have, uh, we want to bring a youth into the, into the mix that will work with the elders committee and they will uh, participate in a cultural camp where we'll have things like beading and, uh, well, actually, we'd like to have it at our famous uh, Métis Crossing site. And we'd like to have, we thought, I thought, too many youth at, the, at first because we want, uh, Athena's come up with a great idea, to have youth write a, a little essay and nothing that's going to be graded on grammar or sentence structure or anything like that, but just a little essay that, that tells us that they mean business. They want to come and participate in this camp and really learn the language. So there's going to be a cultural camp in year two with elders, and then we're going to have another camp in year three as well, kind of take it to the next step. So everything that we're talking about is kind of already been done, and we're, we don't mind you guys copying us. <laughs> we just think that it's great that we're all on the same wavelength, that we all want to preserve the language. When somebody was speaking here earlier, I thought, okay, when the first European men fell in love with Aboriginal women, and they, they started the, you know, the... Cupid was around, whatever you want to say, sparks were flying and people were meeting and, and getting together. I wonder if they knew that they were uh, forming history. They were creating history by this combining of, uh, of, of the language and the people. And then I thought, well, that's what, exactly what we're doing here. We're, we're creating history here. Pictures are being taken, stories are being told, things are being recorded, and we're all part of history here as well. So I think that's, that's really wonderful. So. Another uh, great thing about Athena, I hope I'm not embarrassing her, but if I am, I, I won't stop. Uh, this is our project, so I don't know if it sounds detailed or extensive to you or not. Heritage accepted it. We, up until this year, were getting funding one year at a time, so this is our three-year project. But Athena said, you know, Fran, would it be okay if I did a research project as well? And I thought, well, you know you hit the jackpot when you hire someone for a certain job and they say, can I do this job that you hired me for and another one? So Athena is currently working on coming up with a research question. And, and that, from what I gather, is, is a real, it'll have a focus on the youth and it'll have a, a, some life to it and it'll have some sustainability because a lot of times you do projects and when the funding ends is your work ends. So we, uh, I'm really excited about this research project that's going to, that's currently being developed that will also involve questions and, and answers and research. Uh, so I think Heritage is getting a real big bang for their buck from Alberta, uh, but I, I've always thought that they get their money's worth when, from all of us when we do our projects. So I think, uh, have I missed anything from all my, my friends in Alberta? Have I covered it all? I think I've covered everything that we've, we've given you a little, again, a little reminder of things we've done in the past, a three-year project. Um, we'd be happy. Oh, and Athena's also going to, she's registered for a couple of the SILDI classes. So um, we feel that we're really getting a lot of um, value for our money and doing a lot of hard work regarding Machif in Alberta. Thank you for your time. I'd like to uh, introduce uh, 
Lewis Belrose from the Peace River country. We need a oil, a mechif we peak squill. We still not the peak squill, which better stuck. Okay, why am I? We still cannot tell with the Maui arc. Thank you. New Tini PA, Mamma Piano T. You got you gonna go with your Pima Mago. Fill up, you got Ramley Otewa Mago. I grew up with them. It's nice to see people that you haven't seen for years. And uh, I, I thank Gabriel Dumont Institute for holding this conference. It, I know it's a lot of work. And uh, of course, uh, Dave, uh, that's who I've been on the phone with over the uh, wire. And uh, thank him also. Sapaski. <coughs> Nimiga on we hon. I is come capic squit toy. They see him now. Taut some capia hai. Was kaiga neki samanigi pig squit. We got quay. Halls of Tayage. Dance halls. You go horskats kamiga we akaski and got in Alberta. Eight settlements in Miga we are. The wiggy are. You go pick schoolman or Tistamagi, Gisika, so give it, pick squat at Ogamahana, Otina. You go piazza moanto. Was Kaigana, Quimigano, as Kieste. Umstitas Kitige. Was Kaigana, me cheat. You go missiogam gaste, tastigota. You go haeto. Maui agui pig school, we hope they see him no go pig squito. The two pigs in his capacigot. Need to a auto. Was Kagan and we may go, we are he to it. You go, Miss Yogam, what? Kigo team no extra me to work. Peace where I tell you, and me go on me stay, we own. Nian no sappers here. In Nigani, any good dear. Capic squid talk, tap with maga. I taste in him now, gone under with Twitter. Way with the Mechigua. Capic talk, as Cassiat, say, he got a way pig squid. Capic squid on good and the most and move it, moon be tawak it, it a coy. You go. Ma oita na te motski ko ekskita. Ate motski ko anse ka sunu ate oya. Fifteen years in Iganian. I had a cousin, uh, my late cousin Mike McDermott. <clears throat> he was a great speaker, but he never spoke in public. He took the Dale Carnegie course, and he used to tell me, <clears throat> tutor me how to talk, because I didn't know English. I could only speak Cree when I went to Vancouver. Very little English. And he told me once he learned it at the Dale Carnegie School of Public Speaking, as long as you have the people laughing and smiling, you can say anything. They'll listen. <laughs> he learned me that when I was very young. <laughs> the, uh, the serious part of it, though, about my leadership in the last 10, 15 years, I learned from a, a man <clears throat> that was my father, Frank Balrose, and an old leader that started the settlements, his name was Peter Tompkins. And he learned me a very valuable lesson. I asked him, Mosom, Winigani and Tataway, Otinigan, dancing it Otin. You go to Gimskaho settlements, Gimskamo at Echinoa. 
Nien aan niin kuin tindeisiin, niin aion tässäkin aah. Omsikist. Kaikki ei koe se, kun tsekki mohu maa. Kopi kehke. 15, I was 14, maybe 13. Omsikist. Pia koe kauhi tämän tindeksi. Kai voi kaat taks kai skohtiin. Ja kun sitten kun jää kouk mun jää oikein jääpäin. Tapi kohamak. Moh katki kui on kakki piks kohtau, ui kusti kui ako. Ma ka piego piti kui ne, vasakami piigo, ui kutta higa, ui tamau. Kutan tohta ako. Ui kane osti ui tamata ka o mersi, thank you very much. And uh, I guess you're wondering why I took my jacket off. <clears throat> I noticed this podium may hide my stomach so the girls think I'm good looking and skinny. Eh? Thank you. <laughs> That's why I stand behind you. <laughs> okay, we will proceed with uh, more updates on the... Uh, reports later this afternoon. So now I have the honor and opportunity to introduce uh, Jordy McCaffrey. Jordy McCaffrey, the executive director of the Gabriel Dumont Institute of Native Studies and Applied Research, has been with the Institute for over a decade, working in various capacities, including as principal of Dumont Technical Institute, a Saskatchewan Métis who was raised in West Central Saskatchewan, Jordy is a GDI SUNTEP graduate who spent several years teaching before joining the Institute. After a number of years as principal of Dumont Technical Institute, Jordy resumed his studies and obtained an MBA, Master of Business Administration, from the University of Saskatchewan. An avid horseman and outdoorsman, Jordy is also currently on the board of directors of the Clarence Campo Development Fund. In 2005, he was honored with the Saskatchewan Centennial Medal, which marked the province's 100th anniversary by recognizing individuals who have made significant contributions to society through their achievements. Mr. McCaffrey resides in Saskatoon with his wife, Jennifer, and three sons. Here's Mr. McCaffrey. Thank you very much, Norman. Uh, while I'm here, I'd like to thank Norman for our, all that he's done for the Machif language. Whenever we talk about Machif and the preservation of our Métis language, uh, Norman's uh, name is one that uh, is usually mentioned in that conversation. Well, without, with that being said, I'd like to uh, first of all start by welcoming our elders who are in attendance. Uh, Member of Parliament, Skelton. President Chartier, President Doucette, and all of the Provincial Métis Council members and of special note, I'd like to welcome all of the delegates from British Columbia, Alberta, Manitoba, Ontario, and Saskatchewan. It's great to see uh, Métis people here all together collaborating uh, toward the preservation of our uh, so important language. Well, I'm very proud to be able to uh, lead you on this important announcement this afternoon. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce some very important people who have uh, a very special announcement to make for us today. First, I'd like to introduce uh, Dorothy Obishan. Ms. Dorothy Obishan is a Saskatchewan elder and Machif speaker, whom we have had the pleasure of working with for a number of years. She speaks Machif, Cree, French, Soto, and English. Wow, that's impressive. Dorothy has volunteered her time and talents for the Saskatchewan Preschool Foundation, where her star quilts have raised funding to send children to preschool. She volunteers at many schools in Saskatoon and has been part of the National and Chief Speakers Association since its inception in 2006. Please welcome Dorothy Obishan. Good afternoon. Tanse kewa. The mutant kakewa up and take. Manitoba, which is up at Oxenic. Ontario, Eco Calgary, Edmonton. 
asem in Ontario, get off the Antenuko Eski Pamikauna. A comino taco is no repamistasunat. La Galette gives you how, the patepis, my manke guico. Tipscare go asamina, Pamuesca or Samuan, asamla Galette goes a how. Cartiopsisca question why. Kayas and most of the Kima Tusiak. When you skate and am I good there with Duxinic? The ghost of Kaikaki Usiak two weeks ago. But I, Utamane Paustamo, a Pausiak Lagalet, Dalish a call, a one makes a Hamakian, Kenanomaka speaks queer, Kenanomaka is a Matsia, Kalmichi Fuya Lagalet, a colleague. We make our quality grand education. So I may make our money a good time. I go and make our kids do something. Fry banana do something. Or some of us can buy man a sausage and buy a can of smoke detector. I go and I go and make our money bank. I go and give it to them. Make fun with our hack. We have to pay for the galette. We have to hack. We save a lot. I come back from the city. I go to Budin to Tamoka. I go to school. I go to the city. 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 Thank you very, very much, uh, Elder Obashan. Our next speaker, the Gabriel Dumont uh, Institute has enjoyed a long-standing and supportive re relationship with the Honourable Carol Skelton, the Member of Parliament for Saskatoon, Rosetown and Bigger. Coincidentally, uh, Carol has her office, her constituency office, right next door to Gabriel Dumont Institute, so we can keep uh, tabs on uh, where she is at all times, and we're very proud to have her uh, to be a close neighbour. She's a very good neighbour. Ms. Skelton has offered her broad range of skills and respective advocacy to promote the Institute's programs and objectives. We are very pleased that she is able to make the announcement today for Canadian heritage. We wish her all of the best in the future as she steps down from her political life to spend more time with her family. We hope she will maintain her ties with the Institute on a friend-to-friend -friend basis. We welcome Ms. Carol Skelton to the National Machif Language Conference. Don't worry, Jordy, I'll still be here. <laughs> Elder, elders, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the province of Saskatchewan. It's a great pleasure for me to be here today on behalf of my colleague, the Honourable Jose Werner, Minister of Canadian Heritage, Status of Women and Official Languages. As you know, it was just a couple of months ago, at the beginning of January, when I announced that the Government of Canada would provide $60,000 to the Gabriel Dumont Institute to hold the seventh National Michif Language Conference. Today, I'm delighted to follow up on that news. The Gabriel Dumont Institute will receive $125,000 from our government to the Mischief Language Initiative, a number of projects that will provide people in this province, particularly our young people, with opportunities to learn mischief, a language that is such an important part of Métis heritage. And I can't say it right now. <laughs> it's getting up at 2 o'clock Ontario time and trying to travel to Saskatchewan is for the birds. The funds I'm announcing today will support a really interesting range of activities. For example, Great Matey of Our Time, a project that will focus on individuals who have been prominent in Métis history. 
A speakers association which will help develop a network to identify our wonderful speakers for public events across Canada. Now, am I going to say it right? I told Robert this morning it's mischief. <laughs> he thought that too after wa watching some of you. Mischief? Mischief. I'm saying it wrong. Mischief? Mischief? Mischief. Dorothy can speak all these wonderful languages and I can't even talk English today. <laughs> a Michif language resource which center which will document stories from Métis elders and focus on incorporating Michif into Métis literature and many other projects related to preserving and promoting Michif in Saskatchewan. <laughs> Jordy, this isn't working. Michif. I'm going to have to go out and say, Chip. Chip. Okay, well, sooner or later I'll get it. It'll take me three days. Our government support for these initiatives reflects on our commitment to improving the quality of life for First Nation, Inuit, and Metis communities. In closing, I want to thank Jordi, the Gabriel Dumont Institute for the important work it's done to provoke preserve and promote Métis culture. By working within the community to develop Métis-specific cultural programs, you are helping to promote an important part of Canada's diverse heritage. Thank you so much, everyone. Welcome to the City of Saskatoon. We hope you come back, and we hope that you have a wonderful time. Thank you all so much, and please excuse my pronunciation this afternoon. <laughs> Thank you very, very much, uh, Carol, for the wonderful announcement. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce our next speaker. He's had a very busy day today. This would be his uh, third speech, and he was on a, a very good trend this morning. Uh, he started off uh, very good, and it just got better, so I'm anxious to uh, hear the words from our president, Robert Doucette. Mr. Uh, Doucette is currently the president of the Métis Nation Saskatchewan, where he's also the Minister of Education and chairperson for, for the Gabriel Dumont Institute Board of Governors. He firmly supports education and training for Métis people of Saskatchewan. His passion for preserving the history, the culture, and the language of Métis people has made him a local expert on heritage and genealogy. Please welcome our president, uh, Robert Doucette. Well, good afternoon again. Uh, considering our past uh, with prior conservative governments, maybe it was mischief, but uh, it's okay. Uh, we've got a good sense of humor, and thank you, uh, uh, Carol. Uh, elders, I, I just wanted to say this. Uh, we'll keep this brief. Uh, we're going to set a new trend here. Uh, politicians speaking less and more business getting done. So, elders... Thank you, Dora. You're my relation, and I, uh, I'm proud to say I'm related to the Obachon family, and, and I, I hope they're just as proud to say that they're related to me. Martin, are you in here? <laughs> well, we're related. Uh, mature speakers and guests, again, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to uh, uh, say that uh, the funding from the Canadian, Canadian Heritage provides the resources necessary for the Gabriel Dumont Institute to continue its work on the preservation and promotion of Michif. Canadian Heritage, through its Aboriginal Languages initiatives, is supporting Métis organizations, our speakers and groups in their efforts to ensure Michif stays an integral part of Métis history, culture, and a Canadian mosaic. As our heritage language, as I said this morning, Michif reflects our heritage, our roots and innovative nature of the Métis to adapt so that they could uh, meet their own needs. We owe a great deal of gratitude, as I said this morning, to our elders and Métis women, and of course Métis men, for keeping the Michif language alive, particularly in times when our people were really discouraged and uh, we were moved around from place to place. I remember elders telling us about how they were moved out of Crescent Lake and they were sent to, to Green Lake and all over the place. But we kept our language alive and, uh, and uh, we were never pressured to give the language of Machif up. Their courage and persistence has led to the partnerships that bring us together for gatherings such as this National Machif Language Conference. Here is where we bring speakers together, 
share a language and develop strategies to preserve, promote the Michif language. I want to thank the Honorable, is it Josie Bernard? <laughs> no, I mispronounced it. Well, I want to thank the Minister of Canadian Heritage and you, uh, uh, Member of Parliament, Carol Skelton, you are a leader in our constituency. You've been a great friend to the Métis people, and I think we should give her a round of applause for all of the things she's been doing for the Métis. <laughs> Again, I will say uh, this in closing. Uh, Canadian Heritage and the Conservative government must be congratulated for making Aboriginal languages a priority and for rec recognizing Michif among them. I, I would like to say uh, thank you very much and in Michif Kichi Marci, Marci Chu. God bless all of you. Okay, uh, before we uh, get into uh, what's on your agenda, we're going to uh, have that song that Laura promised us this morning. So uh, I, I hope people will reassemble soon or they're going to miss something really entertaining here. Kispen kasake hen si magpinasen. Kispen kapagwasen si maganakasen. Edmonton niyo tuktian dalikari pusian. Nemonia sa si Tim Soyan sa ganoma imutskian. Kispen kasake hen si magpiltimen. Kispen kapakwasen, she ma kawakwasen. Chachige negenik, those are the songs I used to hear in, um, when I was growing up. So, Jackie, Tagikskisu, Minan, Giksak, Tawakuche, Tagikskisuak, Mina. So, Piaku, Makia, Pitch, Nigamones, Sigi, Misko, Tata, Misko. It's um, these shoes keep walking back to you. Namwats, Namwats, Nan, don't it be It does the gas with the young. It got me now. It we start to weave me in. Got to six, I say. Me nan e gaski tin e gotamana kami tatetan ta wow kasunetan ta wow kasawa pametan ta wow. I'll give you the second verse. <laughs> thank you, Laura. That was a real treat. And I want to thank uh, George Fleury for the loan of his guitar. You'll hear from George before the end of the day, too. He's a great singer. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to uh, introduce you to Bruce Sinclair. He's a Métis artist, teacher, and now arts administrator, originally from Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan, raised also in North Battleford. He's a graduate from the SunTap Saskatoon Teacher Program and pursued the art of theatre by playwriting, acting, directing professionally with community theatre. He now presently works in Ottawa with the Canada Council for the Arts, and, and, which he's been doing since 2002. Today he is presenting a short skit on his search for the Michif Cree language and his dream to be a champion jigger. Most of the story you are about to hear is true, except for a few well-placed lies. 
Ekase. Ottawa to Tia. Oh, I gotta call my buddy Dwayne Fable, the mayor of Isle Cross. Hey, Tanse Dwayne. Bruce. Bruce. Little Tim. Hey, don't you remember me? Well, I moved to uh, Ottawa. Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. But anyway, you know, guess what? Yeah, they're really short on uh, Mayfi here. Get this, eh? They want me to dance that slippery dance. The jig for the governor general. <laughs> they don't know anything about me, I guess. They know that they used to call me dead foot when they tried to dance, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. But you know, hey, Dwayne, I want to call you, uh, I want to tell you another thing, eh? Yeah, it's about this uh, mischief language. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, the thing, Naps, uh, you know, I need your help because I know you're a fluent speaker and everything. And here I am in Ottawa, and I'm one of those half-finished Indians, you know? And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, I want to learn my language so bad and uh, at the same time be a champion jigger, but, you know, I'm kind of, uh, well, pushing the, uh, getting close to 40, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Um, so anyways, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about, I'm going to call my mom later, so I want you to help me with the language, eh? So I'll tell you a little story. Well, first of all, when I was a kid, I can't remember, but my mom, she's a Mitchell speaker, but she didn't teach me anything. At least all I can remember her is saying to me, uh, uh, oh, what do you think? Kiwi. Kiwi, and I said, then I found out later she's saying, go home. I said, Mom, I'm your son. <laughs> so, or else she'd say to me, uh, I was, I was, Kaya, uh, box to go on. And I'd find, I'd say, what the heck? I'm a, I'm a big head now. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, and then my uh, favorite of all was, uh, she'd say to me, Kami uh, Kitawagi. And I'd say, oh, what you want to choose this? And I said, well, what the hell is that all about? And she said, well, it uh, means you're a, a big-eared little devil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I need, some, I need some help with my pronunciation naps. I know. So it's going to be a long haul. But you know, it's a lonely road. You know, way back in uh, 1987, when we went to that World Indigenous Peoples Conference on Education, I met this elder. His name is Solomon. He knew my kokum from Mr. Wasis, and he, so I introduced myself and I said, you know, Salman, I really want to learn, your, learn the language. Kinehionti, he'd say, and I'd go, oh, here, I'll use the word that so many of us know, apsis. <laughs> we all know how to say apsis, eh? just a little bit. And anyways, he said, uh, well, that's good, my son. He said, it's good that you're trying to learn the language, but who are you going to talk to? And I was thinking, geez, now it's 21 years later, and I'm thinking, well, that's it. And now I've been in Ottawa for five years, and I've been trying to learn Cree. Now, get this, eh? I'm trying to learn Cree because it's hard to find mid-shift speakers. In fact, I was walking around uh, my office in Ottawa, and I was talking to people about mid-shift, eh? Well, just hold on for one second, Dwayne. I want to pra I just feel, I feel the spirit of the matey moving me a little bit, so I'm going to, I'm going to try, uh, I'm going to try my jig, so just, you know, go to the washroom or go take a shit or something. I'll be right back. Hold on. Woo! Hey! Oh, I think I'm getting it. You know, it's the, uh, I know it's the one, two, three, then there's the one, two, three, and then there's a little hop, okay? So I'm just trying to get my hop and my one, two, three. I remember this gal said to me, she says, oh, it's just like a horse galloping, you know, it goes. And I think, oh, that's a good one, you know, it's like, and then I think, but geez, every time I go on a horse, I fall off. <laughs> but anyways, you know, it's like that, you know, you got to think you're on a horse, just like a buffalo hunter. Oh, you remember uh, Uncle Jules? Anybody remember Uncle Jules? 
Let me do a flashback for a second. I'm an actor, and I played this little, this character, Uncle Jules, and he was a buffalo hunter, and he'd go, hey, what's the got to a heap of gun? Oh, Uncle Jules, me, I have to tell goose son, nap your heart. See, uh, and I hunt the uh, la, la bisou. I hunt the buffalo, pass one moose, just hey, that way, I'm a very, say, that's me there. <laughs> oh, yeah. And everybody would laugh at me because I was such a funny jigger, right? Eh? Oh, geez, I better fall, call him. He must have taken the shit already. Hold on. OK, anyways. All right, Nap, sorry about that. But you know, uh, uh, just a second, I got an incoming. Hello? Oh, Mama. Mom, I was just talking about you. Oh, yeah, you remember when you used to look at me really funny and you said, Gisque on. And I go, Gisque on. You told your son you're crazy? Well, geez. Okay, I'm trying to think of all the words that you taught me. And I'm thinking, geez, what was there? Oh, I know. Well, actually, it wasn't you. It was my buddies down in Little Pine that say, Bagamaha, Apital Guzda. You know, they were, and then smoggins. Oh, yeah, smoggins is another word that we learned. But you know, along the way, along the way, Mom, I learned French. Yeah, I learned French. I ran into this uh, beautiful uh, mystical seal squirrel from Montreal. Yeah, you know that place they call uh, mystical Sioux Otenau? Yeah, Montreal. Yeah, I guess they call Paris that too. Everybody's the same, eh? Mystico Su now is Paris and it's Montreal or Montreal. Anyways, so I'm thinking, well, she taught me uh, some French words, and now that I'm in Ottawa, hey, well, get this, I have to, I have to have this voicemail. And it goes, Je regrette de ne pouvoir prendre votre pill à ce moment. Voulez-vous uh, prendre un message? Uh, uh, anyways, I lost my train of thought there, ma, ma, Madame, Monsieur. But uh, so, anyways, I learned this language, and so if you if you drop me in the middle of Quebec, then I'd be okay. But if you drop me in the middle of Isla Cross, boy, I'd have a few problems there. But I, but that's what I want to do. I got some roots there. Well, Mom, I know I'm talking crazy, but I'll call you back in a little while. Okay, hold up. Naps, you're still there? Oh, well, listen. Yeah, here's my idea. Say, so I know all these French words, and I know all these Cree words, and I've been building vocabulary. And I think, well, I must be able to put this together. But you know what? I think what Solomon told me. And he said, who are you going to talk to? So I was, I was trying to get Cree classes going on at noon at the Canada Council. And I had these mystical Sioux come and these people, they're uh, from Quebec. Yeah, yeah, they're, here they are, they're mixed bloods. They don't call themselves Métis, you know that political definition? <laughs> but they're mixed bloods for sure, Algonquin and Mohawk and uh, Inu, and, they, and they've been hiding it for 20, 30, couple generations, but now they're coming out. So I work with them in Ottawa, so we're having all these Plains Creek classes, and we got this guy, a truck driver from northern Alberta. He comes into Ottawa at his lunch break, and he teaches us Cree. But it's really hard. You know why? Because after our lesson, who are we going to talk to? So anyways, I say to myself, I say, self, Naps, you have the language, so you don't know how I feel. But here's what the deal is. If I don't get people my age to start to buy into this language, then I don't know who I'm going to talk to. I'll have to move back to Isle of Cross, eh? And I've never lived there. <laughs> or Buffalo or, or someplace. But then, but then how am I going to live? So I'm, maybe I can move in the bush. I don't know. It's hard to say, but we need to, we need to get on the ball with the language. And we have to make sure that people from my generation just don't talk about it, that they do something every goddamn day. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true, though. The language is hard, especially when you're a little older and deeper in debt. Uh-huh. Oh, listen. Um, 
Naps, uh, you come in to teach us sometime when you get a chance, or I'll come out there to a midshift conference or something, and I'll try and get, I'll learn a few words here and there. But I'll tell you, buddy, it's a hard road for us unfinished Indians. Yeah, we got this English accent, and everybody laughs at us. Yeah, that way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. We have to have thick skin. After all, we are Apitaugusan, eh? Hey, Nitotam, thank you. Can I ask Compton? Hi, hi. We'll talk to you later. Okay. You know what? I feel that spirit coming on. You know, I'm thinking about uh, Uncle Jewel. You know, maybe he's one of those guys that went out to the uh, Montana to pick up Louis Riel from that schoolhouse, you know? come back to help the uh, Métis people. But you know, what do you have to think of this? What was uh, Louis teaching those kids in that school? Was he teaching them mission? But that's what we got to do. We got to get on the ball. We got to find that schoolhouse. And that's what drives me crazy, people. All this SUNY out, and I'm in Ottawa where all the money is. All this SUNY out that comes to the languages, how come I can't go one place in this country and learn midship for one year or two years? I guess I have to go to the community, eh? To me, it's very simple. You get some SUNY out, you pay the teachers, you find a place for the people to go, and the people will come. That's all there is to it. Or maybe I'm being too simplistic. But before I die, I should be able to learn a little bit of the language. What? Oh, I'm at a midshift conference in Saskatoon, yeah. I'll tell them what? Oh, okay. I'll tell them, Mom. À la prochaine. <laughs> okay. Mama says to all the Métis, she says, Akamemo, do your best. Akamemo, do your best. Do your best. Akamemo, what's the guts? What? Why? It's my own mama's thoughts, etc., etc. Well, I hope I find somebody to dance with. I'll give it a shot. Compton, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Bruce. I really appreciate the humor and the music. Good dancing, too. Okay, we're going to continue on with those uh, regional updates and uh, also invite those of you that have thought of someone you would like to uh, recognize to come forward and uh, tell us uh, why you appreciate that person and for what they're doing in Machif. But I will invite uh, René Laurent from Ontario to come and share what's happening in his region. Okay, Tanchi, Tanchi Kiawao, René Laurent de Schnikarshan. La Fontaine, Ontario, Guy Nitawikin, un petit village avec les Canadiens, les Métifs, puis un petit brin à titre les Anglais. Dans la ville, Printemps Wishing, Guy Wikin, avec ma femme, puis à Yawak, trois des enfants. Dr. Shkan, pour la ville, Printemps Wishing, 
arena and bonne job de gouvernement. Uh, Tande Matewak le hockey, le mon niwi, niwi wak, pi Matewak, Mr. Healy Jeu. I am a member of the Metis Nations of Ontario Mitchell Language Committee and a member of the MNC Mitchell Language Working Group, where I have met many master speakers, and this is my fourth Mitchell Language Conference. Briefly, in Ontario, MNO is partnering with the University of Ottawa to study midship in Ontario. The primary step is to record the elders at various gatherings and in homes. A great concentration will be done in and around the historic Métis communities in close proximity to the various First Nations, where the interaction of the languages would have happened. It is a slow process. Recently, there is an effort to translate MNO Health Branch information. I have been working with the Tecumseh Aboriginal Studies Division of Brock University, where the Senate has approved in principle credit courses known as the Introduction of the History of the Heritage Languages of the Canadian Métis. I only found out in 2002 that I was Métis from the migration of the Drummond Islanders. While I was studying for my Bachelor of Education in Aboriginal Adult Ed, in one of the numerous readings, there was the term Métis language, la mochili français, la mochili cri. This is when I was introduced to the language in my first dictionary, la langue Métis Pikishkwewin. In my own personal journey to Kishkita Pikishkwek, la langue de Métis, dans le mois d'octobre, I spent a week in Camperville, Manitoba, Ecote, Lac Winnipegosis, with Rita Flama's family and Grace Zoldi using the Mitchiff apprentice immersion approach. A quote from the movie Dance with Wolves applies to Le Mitchiff. We have come a long way, you and I. Merci et pito tayen Saskatoon, mina kawa pamitin, ni kushi pitama, merci. Thanks very much, Renee. It uh, looks like we've got some takers on our announcements, so uh, uh, that's really great. If any of you would like to get ready to speak, it's your turn now. Hi. <clears throat> I'd like to honour uh, one of our old people in our community that has volunteered a lot of time in preserving the mischief language. And I mean volunteer her own time where she has not received any funding from anybody. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce Chris Perry Blondo, who is one of our elders in our traditional territory. It's called the Sewers River that goes into Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Chris has spent many hours uh, listening to people and going around, sitting quietly by herself, putting her head to work and recording. Uh, recording stuff. And why I say this, I have watched Christian Action where she was invited to schools and where we, the Mayhew woman in that region, along with our president that's very sick right now, who is June Blondo, that opened the doors in Estevan where the Métis were instrumental in being the first Métis families, the Blondes, the Kleins, and the Pelche that opened up that territory. I've watched Kristen in the schools read fairy tales from a book and stand there and translate it into Métis. Uh, not having the educational background, but boy, that girl can sure put a show on. And I encourage Gabriel Dumont to get some of her work, because if we don't, it's going to be lost. And help this woman preserve our mischief that she's doing, more or less, by herself. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Uh, first of all, I will greet the people that have come to this conference and made it a success. I'm very thankful to our area director, Bev Worsley. She stuck to her guns and her beliefs through thick and thin. She and I co 
uh, worked on a project in the Suris River Valley where there was a large Métis settlement. It's the part of the country where I grew up and we have done a mapping project on it. And right now that map is just cleaning up a few little odds and ends before it will be uh, presented to the public, which will probably be done in the Estevan Museum in Estevan, where there are a lot of the Ancestors are, I, in, I uh, preserved on the map their names, and there are still descendants of those very same ancestors that live around Estevan. And I think probably this is one of the better things I have done. I know I keep my hand in a lot of things, and sometimes I wind up in a little bit of trouble over it. But it's been fun all the way. I would uh, suggest to anybody to go that way and uh, study your history, even if you're studying, studying your own people's history, your own family. You don't know uh, how much these ancestors of ours have done to preserve our nation. And I should thank Bev here again. And I thank you all for letting me come up here and say a few words. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. We do appreciate knowing about the work you're doing, and we'll certainly uh, look forward to working uh, with you. Here is uh, Max Morin. Today, we are going to be talking about the fact that we are going to be talking the Mitchell language. We have to preserve the mistake. We are going to be talking about the lacrosse. The colleagues are going to be Εγώ μην θα πετύσα εξής της πίκης κουέα. Ομού τα είναι χειάουγη βενε γάστε στο κουσί μου μεν. Μες τέχνα βάζει είναι χειάουγη βενε να μπατσίχτα να είναι χειάουγη τα βάσα κάμι βίκτον να είναι στο κουσί μου. Μαγαγιά σκητέ εκεί μες το κουσί μου. Μες τέχνα. Μες τόχτα όλα που νόρμεν να πίκης κουίτα νος κίκης απ. Τώ τα κάκα έγω μου εξίσα. Πατά κάκα χάγα μου εγγύσια. We try a home in a good can and get a routine hour. They seen what a group of one of home or language. That queen yards in two now and a bit of a Mr. Haggai to it all. That could Bruce Gay to it and us. My way open in the communities were open with a Pasuna Mogoma. Camps, two now, Raja, Capital Pait, and the community, uh, Kaitago Pait, the way, Kaipasuni, no giveaway. I want to get you know TP with the man. I come in a man at two weeks. She's had a be last year at the mom opia. Pierre and I stay is a tooth to man at two by eight to Tanma at two moon. Mashwan had to me at the matu. Waga used when I see her tan on any hill. Yeah, I go at two moon. I want to excuse the honey had to talk home and my man is an anity. I look cross. Piegana lakla besho chega pina se tu ista ni stena me me na guana me na toti na me na lakla besho itu it. A tu mo ne kisi ipma koti ke na homeland. E si no guana ga ya ska ipmo koti ho to ipm ska wak tu afoga ya ska na pogo bata ge a tu mo ne ge 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 ya mo ta ta ok mina mo e kitsko wa a tu ski o ne ge tu ta ko. So wan man ma no ti pikswa te to go wan mo se go imia stick. Big screen now. We start to get the idea of what is that to work. But as such, man, I got the mah mah mo pia man. We start when stop the work. What stop work in the hill ya? No one took this to me. Big screen work. So we go on, man. You know, the atmosphere to go. I mean, na. We go to the give give some go on batash. Election man, I got the idea to. Because the man, I am sitting here today. 
Association of Métis and Non-Status Indians of Saskatchewan, Promise Métis Nation of Saskatchewan. The government of the election for the president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, board of directors, the metric of language. That would in Mushum, the V, the V Felix, he gets a hat yoke. And I mean, the Pierre right across the street with the V Tom and he gets a hat there. Captain, my wife and those my V in the hat now. Yeah, I'm still seeing where it is. Our language of Man Maguanma, Moyenma, Kagi we Penama, twice some synonym in a poor week's now. Why I go. I've scooted in the Pierre and go sit here with a snow walk on the metric language. My out stone. You know, you know, you know, you know, a deer, that's it, it's near, it's near, we hit a deer, it, it, I, I was tamo, I was tamo at now on the one, that's the way, uh, I've been by a PA of the yesterday. Love for a shirt, you said. The PA we pop it, but he knows what that means, huh? You see, Sam, man, uh, I seen what, uh, Miss Chad wants, uh, it, we pin a mate one is tired, but, uh, that good Peter Barker, Kitakusen in Winnipeg last year. Kia Isla Cross when I give it Takusen. He go eat tweet them our language, you know, it's a unique language all over the world, if I'm with the Antwe. He go uh mama that the Spanish or the English or the French, the dominant societies he had to work. We all mana that who's their their language Nigani Statwa. I got peace at one start or the Aboriginal community or their language. But KOT, instead of losing your language, you created a new language to the Metis language, half French and half Cree. So those are things I think, and I'd just like to honor all the elders, all the people that speak the language yet, to keep it alive, to keep our, because that's the spirit of our, you know, when you hear the fiddle, Bruce is dancing here and sort of gives a little fire in your heart. When you hear people talking about in your own language, you tend to stop. And there's an old and a younger gentleman over there was talking in a Mitchell language. I just stopped by when I was talking to because I understood what he was saying. You know, just you just make you just stop uh, and start talking to people. And when somebody tells you, uh, oh, in the winter time it's cold outside, no, just tell them it's warm. Then he'll start a discussion with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, not agree with them all the time. So that's, uh, those are things I think uh, we have to preserve. We have to pull our language. Come <laughs> I have to say that 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 that I have to say 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 that I have a lot of people are. And uh, another old couple I, I know that used to live in Pine River, they raised their grandchildren. 
and all these folk of the midriff language to them. And so when the young person got up, got old enough that they understood the midriff language. Sometimes we're trying to steer and put the responsibility to the school, but what? Can know my parents for Pakistan why I Women are getting abused there. Even when we were growing up, when we were going to the boarding school in Isla Cross, I wasn't allowed to talk. Clem talked about it a little bit this morning, but I wasn't at boarding school too. Can't talk your language. And that's all the language, because my grandfather and grandmother brought me up. I didn't have a clue what English was. Just a midriff language, and I couldn't talk it. And then uh, we got the idea of, I wonder if I don't teach my, my children English, they'll have it easier in school. So I didn't want to teach them the, the midriff language. My fault. Because I wasn't allowed to talk it in my, in my, uh, when I was going to school. So we have a lot of, we shouldn't be, never be ashamed of our language. Language When somebody asks me if I'm bilingual, I say, yeah. I talk Cree, Mitchell, and English. A little bit French, not much. Not as much as Bruce. <laughs> so that's all I wanted to say because it's important that you people know that we have uh, leadership in this. Uh, province that, that can speak the language, and we're trying to preserve it and trying to assist you guys as much as we can. And I'd like to uh, thank Gabriel Dumont and that national committee, that national committee, that working group, for trying to preserve it, having a 10-year plan and having opportunities for our Mitchell speakers and also our Mitchell language to, to continue to move forward, because we can't, uh, nobody's going to move it forward except us. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Well, we have just enough time today to en enjoy, uh, on a lighter note, the songs of uh, Elder George Fleury, who has agreed to uh, share a couple tunes with us. And then we'll be adjourning uh, when he's finished, and uh, we'll see you back here for the banquet at 5.30. And the Sask Native Theatre production is going to put on a really great play for us from uh, um, uh, following our dinner later this evening. And uh, we'll also have the pleasure of hearing a couple of local uh, singers um, as part of the evening program as well. Come on, George. And... Cook. Get sort to check it, girl. Boy, I'm not got to coach you. The block of Kyoke Waking Wow. I'm a chip in a common. Pe. I'm not glamour. I mean, I got a Kavita Martin. I was on street, on street, I told them, I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing my chip songs in my chip, and I'm also going to translate them into English. So the first one is uh, one that I've learned a long time ago. It's a short one. I've got a sweetheart. She is my honey. She only loves me when I got money. When I get busted, she gets disgusted. To, she goes with Tony, and I'm so lonely. Kongaya, Kongaya, please be my honey. Kungaya, Kungaya, I will get married, maybe. Nevi chimosh and a koja way ma. Kaushun the yam yan a koja way make. 
Kangaya, kangaya, mate shawemen. Kangaya, kangaya, kekawe ketonan mashkot. Ome, I go, I'm a chef and a common on. I'm going to sing now in a, a, a Michif song, but I'm going to translate it in English as well. But before I start singing, I'm going to I'm going to tell, give you the words in the chef so you can follow me as I'm singing. And I want to hear it because once you learn the first part, you're going to have to sing it yourselves. <laughs> Before I start singing, I'll tell you a little story about this song. So shanky one hot. But Moka Stow Mishkawat, a car Kitaka shown not chia. Me Tanshi Zipigo Chikastat Chimishkawas or Shiflena Kamo hot mana. So this little boy had a dog, and the little dog used to run away, hide on him, and the only way he could find his dog is if he sang the song to the dog. So this is how he sang. Remember these words. Tande, tande, at the of chien. Tande, tande, at the yat. She's a reagan while you, or switch a quail. Tande, tande, at the quay yat. Okay, I'm going to sing this in English, and then we're going to sing it in Michif. Now remember those words. Ho, oh, oh, where, ho, oh, where is my, uh, that's too low maybe for everybody, do it on D. Ho, oh, where, ho, oh, where is my little brown dog? Ho, oh, where, ho, oh, where can he be? His ears are short, his tail is long. Ho, oh, where, ho, oh, where can he be? I'm a chef. Tande, tande, mopche chien jaune. Tande, tande que ayat. She's a rake and why you, or so it's a why you. Tande, tande, ayat. All right, kia ora, agua. Oh, you guys now. Tande, tande. Tande. Louder. Oh, she's a rake and why you? Oh, so it's a why you? Tande, tande, que ayat. I always like to sing this song. This last one I'm going to sing for you. I always like to sing this song because it has a special meaning to everyone, I think, that's been associated with a problem at home. And, and the problem has always been alcohol. And I learned this because it meant so much to me. And the song that was written was written by someone unknown at the request of a little boy. So the little, this is how, what the little boy wanted to 
song to be. As I walk down the street of an old country town, I passed by an old whiskey store. I saw a little boy, his clothes were so shabby. I stopped in and I stood for a while. I stood for a moment to listen. These words I heard the boy say, don't sell daddy any more whiskey. I know it will take him away. For a bottle of whiskey drives daddy so crazy. Don't sell him no whiskey today. He treats us so good when he is not drinking. And he tells us that he loves us so. But a bottle of whiskey drives daddy so crazy. I'm telling you this cause I know. He beat my mama and brother. We have no shoes on our feet. The children are hungry. Mama is weeping. Don't sell him no whiskey today. Don't sell daddy any more whiskey. I know it will take him away. For a bottle of whiskey drives daddy so crazy. Don't sell him no whiskey today. Don't sell him no whiskey today. Well, in Kshimar Sin, the Tao George, he got Moshkomek, Maganagamot. In Tanagamo, Parmesh shook me Naka, Wome, Paramahamek. Imagine all the, uh, the talent that we have in the Medi community, and it shows you just ask and people volunteer. And especially our elders, they're always willing to help to preserve this language, Machif. Now I have the uh, honor of also having our elder Harriet Oaks to do our closing prayer. And uh, again, don't forget the banquet and this evening, as Karen had mentioned. And uh, we'll see you again this evening. And thanks very much for the day. We had a lovely day. Well, I'm honored that I have been asked to say a prayer. Uh, Bunju, Marsi Kititin, Umanus Utaiki Payan, Evichia, Sukhishia, Kikanaway Tamahuma. A very precious gift and maka kimi yak libunju. Tunizuka tushka nan. Eka kuika nawe tamahu mama langi nan ka kimi yak. Eka Nimiwe no kika kewe kipeta kushik. Nimama wa tushka nan. Kshishishishinan. Marsi kititin bunju, eki wichi hiak, ksuki shiak, kikanawaita mak malanginan. And I would just like to say, enjoy your meal, bunju kashika ha, taman makami chie kaswer. Enjoy your meal, eko muchikitak at the picture show. Have a good evening. Ah,